Okay, so let's continue with now a little bit more of an involved example, requires a little bit more thinking, a lottery example. All right, so in this example, 52 balls are labeled one through 52. So each ball has a different label. And we're gonna buy a ticket with six numbers. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so each ticket has six numbers. Uh, distinct. So one through fifty-two. Okay. And there are prizes. So if we match six numbers. Um. Let's just say if you match six numbers, you get $2 million. Match five numbers, you get $1,000. Four numbers, you get $33. And three numbers, you get $3. These are pretty, pretty bad prizes, but well, that's not really the point of the example right now. Okay. Um, okay. So now how are we going to model this? So let's come up with a probability model first, where we consider drawing balls and keeping track of the order. Okay. So first we're going to have a probability model. We're drawing the balls. Keeping track of order. Okay. And the draws are made without replacement. What does that mean? That means that we have 52 balls and we're going to pick first ball out of, out of the box. We don't, then we're going to pick a second ball. We're not going to put the first ball back that, that before we pick the second ball. Let's define the sample space. Sample space is ordered tuples of size six. So we keep track of the order. each one between one and 52 distinct. They're all different. They have to be different because when we pick one ball out, we don't put it back in when we pick the next one. How many possible outcomes are there? This is an ordered set. So we're keeping track of order. We have 52 elements and we have to take six of them in order. It's a permutation. It's a six permutation of 52. Okay, so this remember from earlier, this is a six permutation of 52. Do we remember how to, how to count that? We count that as 52 falling factorial six. Remember that means 52 times 51 times 50 times 49, 48, 
47. How many possibilities are there? A lot. 14 billion, 658 million, 135, 4,400. We're going to assume that all possible, all possibilities are equally likely. So our probability model, uniform on omega, okay? All right, so that's great. We want to use this to calculate things we care about, right? So um, we don't necessarily care you know, so that that's the starting point. Now we, we care about certain events. Like, for example, we care about whether we're going to win the third prize, meaning we're going to match four numbers. We care about whether we're going to win the fifth prize, uh, you know, the, the second prize, matching five numbers, et cetera. We, of course, care if we're going to win the grand prize. So let's think about how we actually um, go about this, go about analyzing this. So for any given ticket, There are six numbers. Let's let G1, G2, through G6. So these are going to represent the good numbers. These are the numbers that we picked on our ticket. All the other numbers are bad numbers. And we're going to call them B for bad, B, B1, B2, up to B46. We're going to order them from smallest to greatest. That's just a convention for definiteness to make sure we're, we're well-defined. Okay, these are the bad numbers. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we want the chance. What is the probability? of winning uh, the third prize. Third prize means that you match four numbers. Okay. All right. So let's figure this one out. Let's define W sub three as the event that we win third prize. And how many different ways are there to do that? Okay. Probability that we win third prize. Okay. Real simple is how many different outcomes are there that have us matching exactly four numbers divided by all possibilities, which is 52 falling factorial six. So we have to be able to count how many ways there is to match exactly four numbers. So, How are we going to think about this? So we have an ordered sequence of chosen balls. Okay. Now, in order to win, Six of those balls, uh, four of those balls, it doesn't matter which four, four of those balls need to be one of the six good balls, G1 through G6. Okay. So first thing we have to do is we're keeping track of the order. We have to pick four. We have to pick four that are gonna be good, four spots 
These are the four that we assume. It could be any four. How many ways are there to pick six out of six ball out of six spots? Pick four of them. Six, choose four. Okay. Now, in those spots, there is an ordering left to right. In this case, the first, third, fourth, fifth, first, third, fourth, and fifth. But there's an ordering just within those four of one, two, three, four. Okay. We have to pick a four permutation. So we pick... Four spots for good balls, for our good balls. And then we have to pick a four permutation of the good balls, right? So this might be G3, G1, G6, G4. How many ways are now this could also be g1 g3 g6 b4 etc so the order matters it's a four permutation of six six falling factorial four finally we need to put two bad balls in here in these remaining two spots so bad ball number so a bad ball and a bad ball doesn't matter which one say it could be bad ball 21 and bad ball 10 so this is now a two permutation of 46 And then we divide by, I hate when I run off the page like this. Um, okay, then we have to divide by all of the possibilities, which was 52, ball six. And that's it. The answer in this case turns out to be approximately one in 1,311. And they give you $33 for that. Go figure. Not a great deal, but that's how we calculate the probability. So let's remember the logic. There are six spots in line, six spots in line. We have to choose four of them. We then have to fill those four spots with, with four of the six good balls put in the first, the second, up to the fourth chosen spot. And then we have to fill the remaining two spots with an ordering of the two of two out of the 46 bad numbers. All right, that's one model. Let's talk about an alternative model. An alternative way to model the same thing because the, th the, the events we're interested in don't actually keep track of the ordering. That model kept track of the ordering, that's fine. We can still calculate the events by getting rid of the ordering. Or we could just say winning numbers are reported Winning combinations are reported from smallest to largest, meaning if the way that the numbers come out are, you know, five, then uh, six, five, four, three, two, one, the way that's going to get reported is actually one, two, three, four, five, six. The ordering gets ignored when we when the state reports the winner so it gets reported from low to high 
So now what in this model is the set of possible outcomes? These are just subsets of size six of the 52 elements. So how big is omega in this case? Well, we have 52 elements. We just need to pick six. It doesn't matter what order, right? 52, choose six. And now we're assuming that P again is now uniform on omega. Then in this case, how are we gonna do the probability of W3? We can still express W3, the probability that we match four numbers. Okay. Well, now what we wanna do is we're just picking six numbers. Okay. The ordering doesn't matter because the ordering will be determined when we look at the balls, we look at the labels, we're just gonna order them low to high. So the first thing is we say, okay, we need six of the six good balls. We need four good balls. We're gonna pick a total of six balls. Let's pick four from over here and two from over there. And that's it. So six good balls, we need to pick four times because the this is the multiplication rule. Whichever good balls we pick does not change or does not affect how many bad balls we have to pick from. 46 choose two, and we divide by 52 choose six. And this also is the same number, approximately one over 1311. They're the same number, same answer, two different approaches to getting them. That's the beauty of counting. If we know how to count, we can do it either way. So this example actually get, gives us a starting point for what's called the hypergeometric distribution. That's what I'm going to talk about in the next, uh, the next section. And we'll revisit this example in the context of that distribution.